Hello again, it's me, I'm down here. Um, I'm just um, just going to show you um, the results of um, tuning up um, a little overload today, which was made by um, Maddox back in the early uh, 1700s. Um, and it is a stunning plane, as you can see. It has um, beautiful patina. I've actually actually polished it today without the shine as you can see and it is it is it is preserved the, um, the museum quality um, I've also honed the iron up a bit and um, this is um, uh, it, it, it it's tiny um, and it's perfect for small box cabinets and that sort of thing for making uh, an overload beading now uh, the way to use this molding planes is they have a spring there's a fence on one side, this side, which has been added with little brads here, little nails. And this fence is, um, I think it's made of rosewood. Um, then you've got on the other side, the, the, the uh, flange there is the depth stop. So when you use it, you have to have both of them at right angles to each other and the fence pointing downwards for obvious reasons. That means that when you get to the depth stop, when you're cutting down, 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 when you hit the depth stop, the cutting stops. Now, the way to make the profile is make sure the fence is up against the stock and also that you start at the far end. The reason being is you're basically removing stock in front of where you're cutting all the time. And that means it's a lot easier to do. Now it shouldn't be difficult to use one of these. I haven't tried this yet. This is completely blind. And it's cutting pretty finely. So I could just knock it down a tad. So this, this iron, I think this iron has been sharpened um, about a thousand times is now considerably shorter than it than it was so it will need a little hammer which has disappeared tiny little hammer that I've got I can't find it that will do just to adjust it a little bit <coughs> to deepen it because I could I could hit the um, the front the toe like that which will which will bring it out as well as on the job now The idea is keeping the plane at the right angle is to cut the um, cut the moulding and once you've cut out the front part you can then move back down the piece of wood and um, cut the hole length like that until you reach the depth stop now you know it's also that it's ejecting perfectly i have today done an article on uh, restoring old molding planes and keeping them running uh, this is this is quite an old one um, but there's a lot to it um, that, that it's simple to do but it's vital that you do uh, because over the three, two hundred, two hundred, three hundred years, you end up with quite a lot of things out of tune and that need need tuning. We're nearly there. The centre here needs a little bit of refining, but we're almost done. That's it. We're down. I actually like to um, once we're down to the right profile. Be careful about getting bits stuck in the fence. When we're down to the right profile, um, I do like to a little bit left on it. There you go. I do like to run it quite fast. And that burnishes 
burnishes the surface of the wood of the profile so there you go a tiny little ovolo ovolo um, let me make sure I get it in the right this is tulip wood poplar in the United States and uh, it's, a, it's a good utilitarian wood for this sort of thing you can stain it um, and um, what you do now is you just um, cut that down rip that down and you've got a little a little beading for inside of um, inside of a uh, a panel door for instance uh, or a window frame but that's um, that's uh, just goes to show that getting on for well 250 300 years that this um, this beautiful Maddox um, Ovolo molding plane can actually produce perfect moldings very simply as you can see I'm no expert I'm not a furniture maker remember um, and I'm sure Richard Arnold would look at that and go oh god that's horrible but um, it's magic to me magic so there you have it one molding plane tuned up less than an hour diamond plates flattened the, so the um, face of the iron polished off the burr polished up the plane specifically the the, the, the sole so that it the profile so that it's nice and you can see it's 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 nice and shiny and, and um, waxed so now this is waxed um, it, it just glides across the wood and burnishes it at the same time so there's no this is a one-shot process there's no sandpaper or anything you can't get in there so this is um, this is going to be the final molding for the for the uh, stumpy project more later I've got another beading here and just check how beautiful the Alfie shine has brought out that boxing I seem to be finding I don't know where it is but whether it's just using Alfie shine recently but I seem to be finding boxing that's got this chatoyancy um, cat's eye um, found in jewellery. Um, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm trying to get... Uh, let me have a look through the viewfinder. I'm trying to get this in the light so that you can see how how stunning this is. But it's... Um, and this is a hundred years later. 1829 again um, in beautiful condition in fact it's so beautiful this is a side bead it's so beautiful that the um, the depth stop which is there can be taken off so you've got you can basically go down as deep as you want um, with four screws and I, I've got the four screws out um, very easily um, and it's not something I recommend because they can they can snap off um, but um, if you get a screwdriver that's a uh, turn screw rather that's just the right size which this Holt sap for one is probably made for this job you will see that these are handmade screws and I've lost it I've lost it oh yeah and uh, a bit of um, wax or in fact if you dip it in the Alfie shine here just wipe it in there it's not that much on the end and what happens is that will for the next 200 years allow some craftsman when I'm long gone to be able to get this fence out because we'll put that back in there like that and it will secure it but it won't lock it in forever and you just tighten it up with enough tightness what's left of the Alfie shine can go onto the onto the wood and buff it up and again on the plane sole will give it slip bit of advertising there never hurts does it 
but um, that's a, that's a stunning plane. This is made by Furs and Glidden of um, Exeter. Quite a rare plane, um, but but a, a beautiful maker. And um, just just look at the. Um, let's see if I can show you that the the boxing. It is, it is beautifully double dovetail boxed. Beautiful thing. Very little money, very little money, and to me, it's priceless. It really is, and um, stunning flower on the on the blind side, which has been brought out by the by the um, Alfie Shine. The Alfie Shine gives it is a hard wax, so it gives it, it gives it. There's no tackiness to it, no stickiness. Um, at all and you know very little smearing in fact there's only smearing there because I haven't actually buffed that out yet um, leave it a couple of days it soaks into the pores um, leaves a layer of resins over the over the surface which then further protect it as I say for the next generation and beyond so there you have it two molding planes 100 years apart beautiful oh there you go there's an indication for you now these are both resting on my hand. You can see that. You can see that's an 18th century plane. Because it hadn't been standard to nine and a half inches yet. You see, that's probably ten inches plus. Um, my oh this is this is in foreign, isn't it? This is in, in foreign. It's, uh, that one is 25 which is 10 inches isn't it 25.4 would be so it's just under 10 inches and uh, and that's the difference between the two and also you'll see that this is now starting to get streamlined at the back here personally Maddox particularly I think this shape of finial is is my favorite 100% um, once they started to do this, it indicates to me that it's moving into a period that I'm not that, I, I don't really like. But this, this being a provincial maker, um, he he's, he was a bit he was a bit behind, um, bit behind, and also um, in behind London that is. But also, what a craftsman! What a craftsman! I mean, this boxing is is just it, it's just. I'm going, huh? <laughs> Two planes, both perfectly serviceable, as you can see, producing mouldings today um, that are, in my opinion, better than any machine moulding and uh, ready for my next project. So, excellent. Now all I have to do is do it in walnut. See you later.